Hi there, my name's Jason DeWild and I'm the Head of Audio here at the Australian Institute of Music. And welcome to our latest in this series of Pro Tools for Beginners. We're on to part five and we're going to be talking about MIDI recording today. Here we go. Okay, so welcome to uh, part five of um, our Pro Tools for Beginners program. Thanks everybody for all the comments, been good. Um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about MIDI recording. Um, and I guess to kick it off, the first thing you should do is sort of get yourself set up um, from a hardware perspective uh, first up. So what you need to buy, buy before you do any kind of MIDI recording is a basic MIDI controller. Um, and this is something that basically looks like a keyboard but enters MIDI data, so in the form of notes that you play. So you can buy 25 note, uh, 49 note, 64 note, etc. Uh, keyboard controllers um, and they normally just hook up via USB to your to your Mac um, now once you've done that you're kind of about ready to start uh, recording MIDI data but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually check to make sure that Pro Tools is getting that MIDI data from your keyboard controller. So the way we're going to do that is I've launched Pro Tools at the moment and I'm going to go to the setup menu and I'm going to scroll down to here MIDI Studio and what this will do is it actually launches a whole new program that's kind of related to Pro Tools but not Pro Tools. So this is called a program called Audio MIDI Setup. And for the Mac, this is actually part of the Mac operating system. Now, um, Pro Tools actually uses this MIDI setup um, to communicate with the outside world. So um, what I'm going to do is once I've launched Audio MIDI setup, I'm going to go to Window and I'm going to choose Show MIDI Window. Okay. And what I have here is a list of all of the keyboard controllers and the MIDI controllers that I have in my system. Um, and if all being well, yours will come up here in this window straight away without really you having to do very much. As you can see, I've got a number of them here in my system, but the only one that I've actually got connected at the moment is my Keystation 49. So all being well, yours should appear here as well. Um, and that basically is saying, look, the, the Mac recognizes that you've got a keyboard controller. That's the one that it is. And now what it will do is be able to talk to Pro Tools. Now, if that doesn't come up, chances are you'll need to install a driver uh, of some sort for your keyboard controller. So hopefully that's clear. So my key station is up and firing. It's all good. So um, it should mean that I'll be able to actually now um, input MIDI data into my uh, Pro Tools session. So next I'm going to create a new track. And for this exercise, we're going to create a stereo instrument track. All right. And there we go. Create. Now, if you remember, what an instrument track does is it is able to store MIDI data, so notes and things like that, onto the track itself. This note data, this MIDI data, is then played to uh, an instrument that we're going to actually insert in this, uh, these slots here. So, um, so it's a MIDI data playing to an instrument and then it's generating sound and generating it to the built-in output. So let's go ahead now and um, insert an instrument. So I'm just clicking onto the insert slot I'm going down to multi-channel plugin and we want to insert an instrument. So here the instruments are. Whoops, here. Now this is the available instruments in my system. Okay, and you can see I've got a fair few there, nothing major. Um, but chances are your list will be a little bit different because um, Pro Tools provides some, but it doesn't provide all of these. So one that it will provide is this one here, the DB. 33. So I'm going to uh, open that one. Okay. And as you can see that this is an emulation of a Hammond organ. So you could just press these notes here. And you can see uh, here that we've got some sound coming out of that. 
Okay. Furthermore, if we actually play the key, your keyboard controller now, you should actually hear notes coming out of that too. So it's now that my, my keyboard controller is talking to this instrument track and we're pretty much could record now uh, pretty, pretty soon. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, ins um, instead of using this sort of factory default, I'm going to change it to um, to uh, ballad and soft. All right, so I'm going to just change it to a really uh, to a different tone. And here we are there. Okay, perfect. All right, so I'm going to now put that away. Cool. So we're pretty much um, getting to a point where we could record. I'm going to just save this, um, and I'm going to actually name this also DB33. So I've just double clicked on the track name DB33. And I'm now going to just simply put the track into record mode. Okay. Now, you'll also notice that in this session, I've got a click track. And again, very, very useful for, um, for recording with, because later on down the track, when we're editing and things like that, it makes things a lot easier. And the click track helps us to stay, um, stay on target here. Okay, so I've got my click track. Um, so really now the only thing we need to do is we can um, actually just simply record. All right, so I'm going to do that now. And the way I'm going to do this is just to simply press 3 on my numeric keypad, but command spacebar also works. So here we go. Okay, so you can see that straight away we've got a recording here. Okay, now I'm going to just to show you something here. I'm just going to um, get the grabber. I'm going to look here. Okay, all right. Now, if you can see here, I'm going to just zoom in a little. All right, you can see here, right, that my notes are absolutely smack bang on, right, with the bar numbers here. Okay, now that is certainly no indication of my playing ability, right? Um, but what we've done is I've done a little bit of a trick here. Um, because I'm not actually a very good keyboard player, I've enabled something that helps me to play in or to helps me to play in time. But actually what happens is that Pro Tools um, shifts the notes that I play to make sure that it is um, pretty much on time all the time and this is called input quantize so basically what it's doing is that if there's small timing changes with my the way I play um, Pro Tools will automatically align and push the notes to um, its nearest grid value and in my case the grid is um, I think on one bar so let's have a look at how input quantize works okay so um, if I go to event and uh, event operations okay you can see here that you have something called input quantize okay and i've enabled it right so basically what it's saying is that all of the note ons so basically all of the time that i play a note it will then preserve the note duration and then shift it to the nearest eighth note according to the grid here so if you're a bit shabby like me in playing in time you may want to enable uh, uh, input quantize it doesn't work for everybody because obviously it takes away a lot of the sort of human feel about it and becomes very much much of a sort of click based um, kind of performance but it is useful for kind of laying down some ideas that are m pretty much on time we can now go ahead and play the track back Okay, and that, you know, we can hear that that was just such a sterling performance here. Okay, this is a, this is a lesson as to also why I'm an engineer and not a keyboard player. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I want to add to this part now. So I'm going to add some bass notes here. Now, um, again, because I'm not a very good keyboard player, 
um, I, I use a mode which helps me to add to the parts as I want. So um, to show you this, I'm going to um, open up the transport window. So I'm going to go to open, uh, sorry, window and choose transport. Uh, the shortcut is command one on the numeric keypad. And here is the transport window. Okay, now with the transport, uh, with this, there's this button here. Okay, this is what's called the MIDI merge button. All right, now without this, all right, if I was to start recording, which I'll just do now, okay, right, it's going to wipe out, right, all of the notes that I'd played previously. Okay, so it's just simply going to record over the top of what I'd previously done. I'm just going to undo that. Okay, but that's with MIDI merge switched off. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually switch MIDI merge on. So now when I record, it will actually add on to the existing parts and the existing notes that I've got here. So a use for this might be that you might play the first pass of it as a right-handed part, and then the second pass of it with MIDI merge on will be a left-handed part. So you'll end up getting a right and a left part. So what I'm going to do now is I've enabled MIDI merge and I'm just going to simply record one more time and this time adding the bass notes. another sterling performance and of course you can keep going around this so I could add now a melody so let's just do that and so on and so forth so this is very very good in basically kind of constructing your MIDI parts almost one note at a time if you wish to do that. Okay, so we now have our uh, MIDI part. The other thing that I'm going to uh, maybe explain to you as well is that this can also be used um, to sort of punch into certain parts. So if I just wanted to punch in at say bar four, right, I can select this bar right, and just record on that section and leave everything else untouched, okay. So if I was to record now, okay, there's my new part and that, you know, may or may not work. So I'm just going to undo that. Okay, so it allows you to sort of punch in at certain parts. Now, in addition to MIDI recording as we've got now, um, I'm going to also show you something that's uh, useful for both audio and MIDI recording. And this is called pre and post roll. So if I wanted to record on bar four, it's usually useful that the musician or yourself gets fed a couple of bars of music prior to the recording so that you can punch in, so that the musician's sort of already on a bit of a, a flow and can understand what's kind of going on. So normally when I'm recording, I will enable pre-roll and I can set the amount of pre-roll here. In this case, it's just two bars. You can also see that by a little yellow triangle just here. So that's useful too, and that can actually be moved as well. But um, but let's I'm gonna leave it at two bars. Right, so basically what's going to happen is it's going to play two bars first, then go into record mode, and I'm also going to allow a post roll, which will mean it'll play one bar afterwards. So this will help me to punch into record mode in a lot more of a sort of smoother fashion. Here we go. even in here if I just want to add another note at the end here. Just try one more time. OK, 
Okay, and so you can build your performance, uh, as I said, just one note at a time. Okay, I'm going to save that now, and let's just move on to the next thing. Um, one of the things, obviously, that might be important, instead of hearing a sort of a boring old click there, you may want to use um, some uh, some form of rhythm. And uh, the good thing, I guess, about Pro Tools when you buy it out of the box is that there's actually a um, a, a reasonable drum machine, uh, which is called Boom. So I'm going to now create another instrument track, and uh, there we go, stereo instrument track. I'm going to put the transport window away for now. Maybe just disable the pre and post roll. Okay, and I'm going to just call this Boom. And this is a um, a, a drum machine of sort. Uh, it's pr it's okay, um, but it does have a little bit of its limitations. But it's kind of good to get some sort of basic thing up and firing straight away. Um, one of the slight annoyances I think about this particular one is that when you this has got patterns on it, and obviously when you press start, you you're going to get some patterns, which is totally fine. Um, but I was ex sort of expecting when I first encountered this machine that uh, when I press play on Pro Tools that it would also start the pattern, which it doesn't. So the way this works is you actually have to um, send a MIDI note to Boom and the MIDI, depending on which MIDI note you're uh, sending it, will determine which pattern that you want to play. So I'm going to play a note on my keyboard controller now. And it's getting one pattern. If I play a different note, you'll get a different pattern. So that's the basically the idea. So, um, so the way we're going to do this is um, just now recording another track again. So I'm going to put boom into record mode. And again, because input quantize is on, it means that any note that you play is going to hit on the first beat of the bar. So again, this is really useful, in fact, for, for programming boom, uh, because all of your notes will be in alignment with the actual tempo um, uh, and the beat and bar number uh, of the session. So here we go. see by just playing um, you know four different notes I get four different types of patterns playing um, and again remember with the input quantize as I mentioned before all of these are now perfectly uh, in a line so um, that's a basic introduction and getting yourself started with MIDI recording and Pro Tools uh, I think up next uh, part six we're going to deal with uh, audio editing so thanks very much and stay tuned check you later so I hope you enjoyed part five in our series of Pro Tools for Beginners. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And in part six, we're going to be looking at audio editing. Until next time, catch you later.